time now to take a look at what's been making newspaper headlines this week. And to do that, we are joined by Shannon Williams, aka Brother Black, who's the Brecky presenter on Koori Radio. It's a great to have you on the program again, Shannon. Now, we spoke to you during the election campaign. We, we did a number of sit-down uh, chats with voters about the issues that were top of mind for them during the election campaign. Mm. And one issue you brought up was about this funeral insurance company, the Upla Group. Yeah. Um, this is we're bringing up an article now to talk about um, from the Guardian about this group and this is a personal one for you Shannon yes definitely and uh, thanks for having me on on on, mm -hmm. on the show this morning mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a pleasure to be with you uh, with you both um, and yeah the, the Upla group are uh, the Aboriginal Community Benefit Fund are uh, formerly known as ACBF um, targeted vulnerable Aboriginal families um, with the company collapsing um, in March of this year. Um, New Zealand businessman Ron Pattenden accumulated more than $20 million over a 10, mil over a 10 year period. Um, yeah, which is really disturbing, um, you know, uh, yeah, considering Shannon, the current state of affairs. Yeah, Shannon, this, this has affected just thousands of, of people and, and families. Was there any way that this could have been avoided at all? Uh, definitely. I think with better practice throughout mm -hmm. our business sector in general um, and more, I think even further to that, there's there's also a moral ob obligation as well. Um, and, and now with the appointment of Linda Burney now um, back mm -hmm. to, you know, in, in the role of Indigenous Affairs Minister, um, she's made it a priority that this will be one of her first points of business um, mm -hmm. to address this and also have a, have a, a, a government response to to the effects um, for elders and, and and for me as well, like directly my mum who who is affected by this. Mm. Yeah. And what is the path forward for people who are directly affected, for the families, to get that money back, Shannon? So currently there there are there's an investigation going on and um, I'm led to believe that that's going to take over a 12 month period, um, which you know for us as a family we've had to file reports and complaints and, and so forth. So we won't hear a response for the next 12 months. So um, it's a very stressful time. Yeah. Um, but on, on the flip side of that, um, it's it's good to and reassuring to hear that Linda is making this her first point of business. Um, you know, um, she understands the importance for elders and so mm. forth in community. Well, let's stay with uh, Linda Burney, the new uh, Indigenous Affairs Minister. She is, of course, part of the new Labor government who's promising to enact the Uluru Statement from the heart. This is something that you spoke about on our election panel, of course. You felt very strongly about this. Uh, and Mama Mia has an article about this as well. Talk to us about the kind of changes you think this will make to Australia as a whole if or when the statement is implemented? Well, I guess addressing the three areas, um, the key elements for reform, mm. voice, treaty and truth. Um, it's been five years since the Uluru Statement from the heart was delivered and now under a new Labor, Labor government, I, I feel that we are one step closer to this being enacted. And um, Prime Minister Al uh, Albanese raised this during his victory speech on election night. So um, it marks the first time since the government um, has committed to a referendum on First Nations voice in parliament. So um, with that now, Labor, with a new Labor government in power, um, First Nations leaders have put forward two potential dates for a referendum, May 27 in 2023. Um, which will be the anniversary of the 1967 referendum, mm -hmm. which gave Parliament the power to make laws for Indigenous Australians. Mm -hmm. um, and the second option is January 27 in 2024. And what do you make of those timelines? Because on, on the ABC 730 program, uh, Linda Burney said that they don't have a firm timeline, that obviously there are discussions to be had and things to be worked through. What sort of timeline would you be working towards? Well, these dates put forward by community, th these are coming from our leaders. Mm. This is coming directly from community. So I fully support these dates and I, I feel that this is um, an ideal timeline considering mm. the entire timeline, so yeah. to speak, of, yeah. our, of our country's narrative. Um, that, yeah, I, I think this is, is, is a, a, a reasonable time frame. Mm. Where do you think this sits in the whole process of reconciliation? 
it's a start. It's definitely a start. Um, a voice within Parliament um, to, to address laws and policies that are created about us and, and for us to, to have a say in those processes is vital and critical yeah. um, within Parliament. Um, Parliament is not functioning properly without mm. that voice mm. and um, it's, it's critically needed within our, our nation's Parliament. Mm. Shannon, it's also uh, Indigenous Sports Month uh, this month. Yes. What, what's being held to, to you? I'm very excited about that one. What's being held to mark the month? Yes, going from, you know, some very sort of, you know, hard hitting stuff to <laughs> some more bright and, and very happy, happy stuff. Yeah, um, News, News Corp, um, you know, and it, it's a, a, a direct link to their Reconciliation Action Plan. Mm. Um, uh, you know, the, they have an editorial initiative focusing on highlighting um, and celebrating Indigenous sport. Um, and excellence. And two of their ambassadors, Ash Barty and Greg Inglis, um, you know, who else better to encourage young people um, and, you know, two, two great role models. And, you know, just, just a couple of highlights out there. You know, we, we had Arthur Beetson, the first ever Indigenous captain of, of, of an Australian team. Um, you know, but more recently, Lance Buddy Franklin, the first AFL player to kick 1,000 goals. Jonathan Thurston, the first player to score 2,000 first grade points. Or one of my heroes, Paddy Mills, the first mm -hmm. Australian boomer, Olympic medalist, and also the first Indigenous NBA basketball champion. Mm. So and good. then also further to that, yeah, like it's a massive week in sport. Um, mm. We had Marn Grook at the SCG last night with the Sydney Swans with a come from behind win. Um, it's part two of Sir Douglas Nichols round. And I'd, I'd like to make a special mention of some guys that are doing some great things out there. Um, the Rose Brothers um, with No Limit Boxing um, and their events, um, scheduling a whole calendar of events of sport for, for First Nations people. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's lots happening. It's a bit of a blackout at the moment. Uh, lots to celebrate. <laughs> lots happening. Lots to celebrate, Shannon. It is so good to have you yeah. on the program this morning. Great to speak to you and, and we'll speak to you again soon. Definitely. Thank you very much and enjoy your morning.